This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I think uh, we are good to go. Uh, we will uh, start with today's session. So uh, I would like to uh, welcome everyone to this webinar. A very good morning and good afternoon to everyone who have joined in so far. Uh, so I would like to welcome everyone to this webinar on Certified Data and Analytics Tester. This webinar is brought to you by Verity Software in association with uh, Data and Analytics United, Bright Test and Stefan Forum. So before I start with the introduction of our today's presenters and the topic, I would like just like to give a brief uh, note uh, to all the participants. Uh, so please note that you all are in a listen mode only and you will be uh, able to listen uh, to this webinar. And uh, if you have any questions, you can just type them in the chat box and our uh, presenters will take the questions at the end of the session. So without further ado, I would like to welcome our presenters and the authors of the Certified Data Analytics Tester for today's webinar. So uh, to begin with, I would just like to take a few minutes to introduce each and every presenter uh, for today. So uh, to start with, uh, we have uh, Yap Tiru. He is the founder of Data Connected, the data network for professionals and organizations to share knowledge, work and products. So he has been passionate about data for over two decades and has developed it in many different roles. As the responsible person for advice, uh, lean, which is change, development, test, quality, delivery, and support for complex data environments within small companies as well as in large international corporates. He has always loved to create data and quality awareness at all levels, be it strategic, tactical, and or operational. And today, he is proud that together with Armando and Rockier, they have devised and developed the CDAT training curriculum to create greater quality worldwide, a dream come true. So uh, that, uh, Yap is our first presenter for today. Coming to the second presenter, he is Mr. Rockier Amarlan. He is the founder of Amarlan Training and Advices. He is a consultant manager and a trainer in software testing, agile business analysis and data analytics. And he has more than 20 years of experience in the financial banking and technical automation industry working for a number of Dutch and international companies. 
He is ISTQB qualified and specialized in test process improvement, which is TPI and TMM, and is developing complex test strategies. He is a certified ISTQB trainer for software testing, business analysis and requirements, management and specialized in the area of data migration and complex chain testing. Coming to our third presenter for today, his name is Armando Dorshek. He, Armando, is the founder of Verified Testing Services, having more than two decades of experience in the field of software development, operations, and human development. He loves to focus on quality in data-centric projects. Next to first-hand experience in testing, data warehouse, and analytics projects, he aims to add knowledge about data privacy, ethics, migrations, design decisions, and agile working to the game. He acts as test consultant and quality manager in large scale projects, providing knowledge, strategies, and insights to program managers and to both tech and business colleagues, both locally in Netherlands, but also in international programs, including offshore collaborations. Each month, he clears his diary for a few days to provide courses on data and analytics testing. But last but not least, we have Kyle Alexander Simmons. Uh, Kyle is the CEO of Brighttest. He's energetic and loyal and hardworking Canadian from Winnipeg. After completing his bachelor's degree at the University of Manitoba in Germany, in German literature and mathematics, he moved to Berlin in 2006 with a DAAD scholarship and got his master's in communication and languages. After working several years at various agencies, both for campaigns for national and international brands, he stumbled upon an incredible path, which led him to where he is today, the CEO of a global exam provider called Bright Test. So this was a brief introduction of all our four presenters for today. So over the next one, one and a half or so, our presenters will address topics to utilize embedded structure testing in order to reach and improve the quality goals in your work with the focus on data and analytics environments. In this webinar, the authors will give you more insight in the, in the background and the content of the Certified Data and Analytics Tester Certification Program. So uh, without further ado, I would like to hand it over to Yap. Yap, please go ahead. Thank you. Hello, Yap. Thank you, Prasanna, for, the, for this great introduction. And uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for the opportunities to speak at this webinar, of course. Uh, and thank you for you all being here online. Uh, don't hesitate to ask questions, like uh, Prasanna said. And, but do they by chat, and we will come to uh, that uh, after uh, the presentation in our Q&A session. So I will give you a short introduction about the background. Uh, and our, our ID is uh, uh, originated, and a brief uh, yeah, introduction about it, of course. Uh, well, as you probably know, often is mentioned uh, or even shouted uh, that uh, data is the new gold. But uh, yeah, in the beginning, 20 years ago, there were still a lot of doubts about this quote, of course. Uh, companies started with collecting data for reporting. Uh, they, they also did some predictions uh, called uh, business intelligence. But, but it was hard to select the right data uh, with the quality needed to report the truth. Also, storage was quite difficult at that time uh, and also very expensive. But when data storage became cheaper and data warehouses uh, became more structured, BI and reporting uh, took a flight. And uh, yeah, of course, also uh, artificial intelligence uh, took a flight too. Uh, well, they started to accelerate at that moment, but you won't believe it. But it originated already in the first half of the 20th century. So quite a long time ago, they already had artificial intelligence. So that's uh, yeah, amazing, I thought. Nowadays, uh, of course, we have uh, intelli intelligent cars like, uh, uh, oh, sorry, like this one. And uh, uh, Apple has a car and it can park itself, he can warn you, he can intervene, and sometimes he can already even drive itself without any help of the driver. So, uh, well, that's quite amazing. We also have uh, the smart roads. I, they really exist and uh, they give signs about the weather circumstances. For example, uh, they warn you when the roads are frozen uh, or broken, or uh, if they become too wet to drive. So, uh, yeah, we have uh, 
uh, a lot of intelligent things like cars. Uh, but what do you think about the Internet of Things? It is also developing very quickly at the moment. So uh, at the moment, they are uh, really smart kitchens and they communicate. Uh, there's communication between the fridge and the supermarket. So the supermarket knows where your fridge is almost out of stock from and will put it in your basket to deliver. But also the fridge and its factory are connected to monitor its conditions and to notice if or when it needs to get maintenance. Uh, and uh, yeah, you also can have an app on your mobile which tells you your milk is almost due. Uh, and of course, your oven will also tell you uh, that it needs to be cleaned too. Well, we have uh, nowadays also uh, communication between vehicles uh, and, and its environments, uh, like this picture shows. Yeah, and, and I can tell you much more about what we do uh, related, uh, of all based on data, of course. Uh, one thing uh, I want to mention is also uh, smart grid. It's very modern in the Netherlands, uh, at least. Uh, they are really busy uh, with it, but I think uh, all over the world. Uh, but but yeah, you see more and more organizations, factories, suppliers, builders, uh, buildings, uh, roads, uh, street lighting, uh, all are connected and share data and information automatically uh, between and with each other uh, and help us to become more efficient, effective, but of course also to make our work and private life easier. Well, I even didn't mention the lots of development and innovation that happens now around things like robotics, self-learning systems, etc. But uh, yeah, I can speak hours for this, but uh, we have to go to our eh? uh, uh, yeah, uh, su uh, subject for today, today and that's uh, uh, of course our training. But uh, yeah, one thing is clear. More and more data-driven products and processes are popping up in our lives. The biggest companies like Google, Amazon, Alibaba, Uber, they are all based on data-driven strategy. So I think, or I believe, it's really their gold. It's, it's, it's becoming the key asset for companies. So when data is the uh, common denominator uh, today, uh, or more specific, I think data and analytics is uh, more and more the denominator. We come to the about because, yeah, how can you assure uh, as a company quality in this world of data? Uh, like the person right in the corner of the uh, of the sheet. Yeah, how do you check if everything is all right? Well, in 2017, Rogier, Armando, and I had a meetup together. We wonder why data is becoming that important in the strategy in many companies, but that there still wasn't such a test training with a focus on data and analytics. We couldn't find it in the Netherlands, not in England, not in the USA, even not in Asia or any other continent. So we saw an educational gap. We thought it's important to have such a training for a world uh, of quality driven people. This because testing in the data environment is really different than something else than testing websites of, or front-end applications or technical machines, uh, mobile apps, uh, you name it. So we thought, we do. why do we not develop uh, this training uh, with focus on data analytics testing ourselves? That was the moment that uh, this foundation training certified data and analytics tester came to life, or be short, see that. In 2018, we executed our first tryout. We developed further and trained many consultants in the Dutch world of data analytics. And to be honest, we gained a lot of great feedback from our students and training uh, on the training's uh, quality and its uh, content. And they told us that they were very excited about this new certification. And also, uh, most of them look forward to the SQL trainings, uh, which will probably come, uh, eh, like practitioner training, uh, practitioner, or the expert level, or maybe there will be a tool specialist training coming. So if you have 
uh, interesting suggestions for the next. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, uh, give this feedback to uh, one of us or do it in the chat. Well, uh, this year we wanted to secure this intellectual uh, legacy and share it with the world. So we have taken the next step together with, uh, of course, Brightest, of which Kyle will explain some more about later this webinar. And now we are presenting our intellectual legacy to you all. Well, CDAT is a training and uh, yeah, it provides you a basic understanding of data and analytics testing, but also about uh, data and analytics in general. Uh, second is uh, it also enable you to apply tools and techniques about returning uh, to your organization or clients upon returning to your organization or clients sorry uh, so, so uh, it, it's it, you know the, the right tools and techniques to use in a data and analytics environment when you uh, come back and uh, last but not least um, yeah, it uh, of course prepares you for the exam leading to the data and analytics tester foundation level certificate well this is my short introduction uh, uh, of the background of CDAF and where it comes from. And of course, Rogier will take uh, over now for, uh, to tell more about the learning objectives and the content. So I will hand over to Rogier. Yes. There it uh, is. Okay. You're now. Share. Let's see if this works. Maybe you also want to put a video on while you're we are presenting, so we can see who's talking. <laughs> share my webcam. Is it visible on the screen now? My uh, share screen, my screen or not? Yes, Rocky. You see the presentation? You see the presentation now? No, we can we can see your video. Oh, but, but not, not your pres presentation. Uh, I will do it like this. I think now you will see my presentation, or else you have to do. It. Oh, it doesn't show my presentation. Ah, there it is. Do you see it? Mm. We tested, we tested this in other Yes, now we do. Yes, yes. Now it's visible. There it is. Yeah. Ah, that's always a challenge yes. with a live, a live webinar. Uh, we tested it in advance, but uh, you always see that it will uh, will go uh, some startup problems. Look, okay, here, uh, here it is. Um, let's see. Yep. Um, what I, I'm going to tell you, because Jaap uh, gave a brief introduction about uh, what was the background of this uh, course and what we, why we choose uh, to develop this course. Um, and what you see indeed is in the market there's a lot of data collected and that the testing of the data is, uh, is, yeah, is, is basically we didn't find any information about that one and that's why we developed this course. Uh, what I'm going to show you in this uh, uh, yeah, short talk that I'm going to give you is about uh, what the objectives of the course are that we defined in advance and it also gives you a complete overview of what in what uh, the content of the course and what you're going to learn during the course um, uh, i also want to tell you in advance that it's not a course that we're going to explain you the complete icqb certified foundation level content uh, because we expect already that um, uh, that the participants of this course already have that knowledge so basically what we want is really focusing on the data analytics in the business intelligence part and that will be a, a big uh, uh, yeah, part of the course will be will go over that uh, subject um, what you see here the first uh, 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 objective that we have is uh, and, uh, give a brief understanding of what's business intelligence and data analytics environment and how to do perform testing in there so what we're going to do we're going to show you all the different aspects of the uh, of a business intelligence and a data analytics part. Uh, uh, think of uh, 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 things like the data lake, uh, a data mart, what's uh, a data warehouse. Uh, understand how they are connected to each other, and see uh, what's 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 more what's different than a traditional approach. And with a traditional approach, I mean a traditional testing approach is that we test an application or we test a, a series of applications in combination with each other. 
or if you're talking about the technical automation, you're talking about products that you connect to each other. But in this case, we really want to show you, okay, what's a typical business intelligence environment? How does it look like? And what are the aspects that are important in that one? So that will be a, a topic that we're gonna address in that one. We're gonna give you an introduction uh, about what are different skill sets that are required and the diversity of test roles and skills that you need in a DA environment, a DA data analytics. Um, why are we going to give you that information is what we see and what we also found out when we uh, do this in practice is that um, yeah that if you are testing in a business intelligence or in a data analytics environment different test skills are required uh, basically not different test skills but you need different skills for example SQL uh, knowledge uh, SQL knowledge to develop to develop queries etc that's important information that's, um, uh, yeah, that you don't learn in a basic uh, testing course. But in this course, we will focus We will focus on what are the different aspects of the different roles. Uh, we also talk about a BI tester. In the market, we see that a lot of times a BI tester is asked uh, as, an, uh, as a role. But what, what is a BI tester? And that's, uh, we are gonna introduce different roles and skills that we have in this course. Uh, with the different skill sets on that one. So after this course, you, you know what to do with that one. We are going to give you insight and how you can apply different test techniques and how they can be, pra be practiced in a BI and data analytics environment. Um, if you go to an ISQB uh, foundation level course, for example, you will learn, learn all kinds of techniques like equivalence partitioning or boundary value analysis or uh, state transition diagram testing, et cetera. Uh, what we did is we looked at those techniques, but not only those techniques of the ISTQB course, but also at other courses. And we selected some techniques that we uh, thought were useful in a BI environment. And what we're also going to show you is which te test techniques, because we really think that test techniques and the use of test techniques can help in all test projects. So also it can help you in a data analytics environment. And we're going to show you uh, how these techniques can be uh, used in different areas of the business intelligence uh, environment. Uh, Armando will show you the business intelligence environment that we uh, use in this course. Um, so uh, we're going to uh, make a sort of list of which test techniques could be best applied in certain situations. Uh, we also understand that uh, the business intelligence is a, is a very, very big area. Uh, you have all kinds of aspects you can focus on. So we have a sort of general overview of which techniques are useful in which part of the uh, of the BI environment, uh, and that can be useful as a sort of uh, um, uh, yeah, backpack that you have with all kinds of uh, with uh, a tool set that you can use and say, okay, that that this tool is the best in my situation. We are not going to explain all the test techniques in detail. Uh, we expect a little bit already that people know about those test, test techniques, um, but if uh, if it's required and uh, people want to know about the test technique, we gonna explain. We can explain it during the course. It is not the complete focus that we want to put on, because we really want to focus on which techniques are useful to do in a certain area. Um, also, what we want to uh, address in the course is the different testing aspects of a BI and data environment, data analytics environment compared to traditional testing. So we introduce a sort of extra test types that we uh, thought of, uh, that we see that are uh, different and specific for a BI and a data analytics environment. And then you have to think about, for example, OLAP, uh, online analytical processing testing, transformation testing and completeness testing. Uh, transformation is that the data is transferred from system A to system B. Uh, most of the time it's also called uh, ETL testing. So we're going to show you what it is, how you can test it, and what are aspects that are uh, useful. But also completeness. Is the data transferred from A to B complete? Uh, is it uh, unique? Is it concise? All kinds of quality aspects are yeah, important to use uh, in this environment that are <clears throat> different than traditional uh, approaches. Um, and so we are focusing, it doesn't mean that the traditional approach um, uh, and test techniques or test types are not helpful. They are still helpful uh, because we still have to, for example, do an integration test, an end-to-end -end test or a chain test uh, on, the, on the BI environment too. 
uh, but we are focusing on the specific aspects of the BI environment in this one. Another one is uh, understand the difference between quality attributes for system requirements and specific quality attributes applied to data environments. Uh, what you see in uh, the most uh, common test courses is that we focus on uh, quality attributes like ISO 25010. And in um, uh, this course, we, we think those system requirements are still useful and helpful to be used. Uh, but we also want to uh, introduce some specific quality attributes that are applied to the data environments. And we're going to use the DAMA for this one. That's a specific quality attribute that tells you something about uh, data quality. Uh, so we introduce those qualities because we, yeah, we see that the uh, system requirements are not completely um, yeah, enough in a BI environment. Um, what we, well, one aspect that we, uh, from the, yeah, from the ITKB foundation course uh, that we still want to apply in um, um, and use in a data analytics environment in this course is that we're going to do a risk analysis uh, because we, we think a risk analysis also as in the CTFL uh, course is still a very good tool that can be helpful uh, to find out which aspects of the system I should test more and which aspects of the system I should test less. Uh, that's the reason why we added an, an exercise, an extra exercise uh, with risk analysis, especially applied in a BA and data analytics environment. So what we're going to do, we're going to show you a sort of case. We created a case description of a company, a specific company with data intelligence and the data warehouse aspects in it. And we're going to execute a risk analysis on that one. Uh, and it's, it's, it's useful to see uh, the combined quality attributes that are being used in a traditional environment, including quality attributes uh, in a data analytics environment, the DAMA, for example, and how they are can be combined in a risk analysis uh, session. So you know where I'm going to focus my testing on. Another thing um, is that we also, I already a little bit explained it about the data quality, the complex of data and the importance of the use of in data analytics. Uh, data analytics is a little spe specific subject because also um, there are different types of data analytics, data mining, et cetera. Um, and we're going to explain to in the course what it is. We're not going to uh, really learn you how to do data analytics, but it's useful to know information about it because it's an, a very important aspect uh, of the whole BI environment and how does it work and what is data analytics and how you can use it and uh, and also what kind of tests can you do on such environments so we're going to address that also in the course and the last one um, uh, we have knowledge about complexity of dtap environments development test acceptance and production environments in a data analytics landscape including data protection protection regulations and what we want to do here is what you see in a traditional project what we saw also in traditional products projects is that uh, we that a test environment setup is quite uh, yeah is, is quite simple in most times it's a standard application connected to some other interfaces it's not simple but uh, it's uh, it, we see in the data analytics you have multiple dimensions of uh, test environments you have one the test environments of the sources that you get the information out you have test environments of the development of the data warehouse itself you have that uh, test environments of the of the ecosystem like uh, uh, which platforms it should run on, uh, all kinds of different uh, environments that have to be in sync with each other, especially when you use a data warehouse environment and you want to see the difference uh, between two sources. Uh, it can be useful to find out, okay, are we take, capturing the correct information in the right time on the same environment, etc. Is the data in sync with each other? So there's uh, extra complexity in testing integrated systems in a BI environment. So we really thought of, okay, on top of the normal traditional way of DTAP environments, we also gonna explain the complexity that you have in, an, uh, in a BI environment, and also the complexity with data protection regulations, because yeah, in, in, in Europe we have a lot of, uh, um, this is a special law introduced about the use of, uh, of um, uh, personal data in, in test environments, and that information uh, yeah, how do you handle with that one, and how do you handle with it with that law uh, uh, in your test environment? 
because uh, if I'm going to scramble data and do the personification of data, etc., in a, the in a data analytics landscape, yeah, how am I doing that on multiple systems? So we're going to explain you uh, information about that one. Based on this one, uh, on all these objectives, uh, we defined uh, interest areas. Basically, we defined six interest areas in the, and also the syllabus is created that we developed. And uh, I think the end of the July, beginning of August, it will be uh, published. Uh, there are six, six chapters in there. Uh, the first will focus on the introduction to business intelligence and data analytics. And here under this line, you see all kinds of uh, uh, BI, data warehouse, data mart, data lake, data analytics, big data, OLTP versus OLAP. Well, maybe uh, the terms doesn't say you anything yet, but these, these are all aspects uh, that are in a business intelligence environment. <clears throat> and those, uh, and we're going to explain the difference between it. What is it? How is it located? Uh, what's it in your company? So you have a big, a big introduction about the whole landscape. How does it? How does it? Do you capture information? Uh, the second chapter we're going to focus on data analytics test strategy. Uh, we're going to talk about different software development life cycles. We still see that, uh, for example, if you are in an agile environment, uh, how do you manage your project, or are, when are you in a uh, in a waterfall or in a V model environment? How does it work? But also the risk-based testing is part of this chapter, and the test skills that are the roles and responsibilities of everybody. Uh, test techniques applied, the third chapter. Uh, here are some examples of test techniques that we applied, but there are more in the, in, the in, more in the syllabus and also more introduced in the course. This is equivalence partitioning, boundary value analysis, decision table testing, and data combination testing. And uh, we're going to apply though, those techniques, but we're not going to apply it at, with, the standard, um, yeah, with the standard test or with the standard uh, application, we're going to apply it in, an, in a real BI environment. So you really can see, okay, how does this technique work in, an, uh, in a BI environment and what are specific aspects and which techniques are useful for which parts of the, uh, of, of the BI landscape itself. The fourth, uh, fourth interest area that we created is the BI testing part. There were test types in there like report testing, OLAP testing, data model testing, mining, uh, what is it, completeness and transformation. And we defined and uh, going to give you all kinds of uh, uh, tools that you can use to how to do all those kinds of different tests, um, because all these uh, test types that are located here, reports testing, uh, requires a different approach on how you do it, because reports testing is a little bit different than completeness testing or transformation testing. So we're going to explain all kinds of uh, information about that one that you can use. Um, then uh, the fifth chapter, we're going to focus on data quality in the ISO 25010. But uh, that's, I think uh, there are other, not only the ISO 25010, but we're also going to introduce all other um, data quality characteristic standards, standardization documents that, are, that exist in the world. But we are specifically introducing DAMA DAMA uh, focuses on data quality. We're going to explain what the DAMA is and how you can use it in this, uh, in, the, in, the, in the, your test strategy that you want to use in your, uh, in, in your test project. And the last one, that's the environmental needs. Environmental needs. We call it the, the, at this moment still uh, the multidimensional test environment, but we are still uh, uh, looking into it. If this is the best name, so uh, there's uh, still some work to do. Uh, but in the environmental needs, we uh, we are going to describe the different uh, test environments you have in a BI environment and what uh, the different aspects are and what are special things you have to uh, take into account take into account when you are uh, uh, setting up test environments for your uh, test project. Um, basically that's uh, the, the, the information I want to give you about the content of the course. Um, what also can be useful is to find out from yeah for what's for whom is this uh, an interesting uh, course? So we have sort of defined sort of target audience and prerequisites for the course. Of course, we want that everybody that is interested in something with BI would attend this course. But I think uh, there's a specific group that we focus on. Uh, of course, that's the uh, test professionals in the field of data analytics, people that are uh, uh, test uh, professionals um, uh, that now are working in environments with data warehouses or with uh, source data or with reports or whatever um, in the complete uh, BI environment, they can um, 
you know, uh, then, then this is a useful course to follow. Uh, but also, of course, test coordinators and managers are useful people to attend this course because we uh, think uh, knowledge of the environment still can be useful also for test coordinators and managers on how to set up a project uh, because it's quite it's a little bit different than a traditional uh, approach. Uh, developers and analysts, of course, but what we also specifically saw in the Netherlands is when we uh, get, when we are planning these courses that BI consultants and engineers uh, were uh, attending this course. And that's also the reason why we kept the test techniques still uh, as an important part of this course, uh, because we saw that BI consultants and engineers are very interested in how to do testing uh, and they uh, the, the, all the techniques that we show to them, uh, they said, well, this is great. We want to use this techniques because we didn't know them before. So we see that BI consultants and engineers are still very, um, uh, yeah, it, this course it can be a very helpful course for them too, to attend. Uh, they also can, what we saw most of the course we gave, we had a sort of combination of testers and BI consultants in the room. And what you also saw is that the combination of the two participants in the course uh, gave a very nice, uh, uh, cool, nice, um, yeah, how do you call it, uh, structure in the course that the uh, that the BI consultants can tell a lot about the BI environment and the complexities in there. The testers can tell a lot about testing, and they they help each other to find out the best way how to approach it. So I put the BI consultants and the engineers on this sheet, but I, because I still think that they uh, also can find a lot of information that can be helpful with this one. Of course, the focus will be on the test professionals in the field of data, data analytics. That's also why we say uh, that uh, that uh, ICTQB CTFL or an equivalent of those the, one of those courses uh, can be helpful to um, to do in fo to, before you can start to do this course. It's recommended. We doesn't say you have to follow it because we capture the stuff of uh, that's necessary to have during the course. So if you're going to introduce a test technique and the participant doesn't know how the test technique works, we'll explain the test technique. So if you don't know it exactly anymore, and I can imagine because not everybody uh, is following every year the course, uh, so it still can be helpful to tell something about those test techniques. So that's why we still advise uh, to have uh, a little bit of experience. It's recommended, but it's not uh, essential to follow this course. And that's uh, what I wanted to tell about the content uh, of the course. And I'm not going to change the presenter to um, uh, Armando. And Armando will explain more about uh, the BI process itself. Uh, we created a model for that one. And uh, uh, Armando is going to show you that model. Hi everyone, thank you very much for attending. Uh, my name is uh, Armando Dursek and I will, uh, just like Rogier said, uh, show you the, the illustration that we made to, uh, uh, to explain a lot of the things that Rogier talked about. Um, here you can find a typical BI or data analytics uh, environment. Uh, and um, this, uh, this drawing uh, is something that we used throughout the course uh, to explain all the techniques that we, uh, we try to uh, teach and all the things that we cover. Um, just like Rogier explained that there's a lot to cover. And uh, now, how to apply all of this to the data analytics uh, landscape? Well, as always, uh, illustration will help out. Uh, first of all, if we uh, take a look at uh, the right-hand side, um, we uh, try to focus on the quality of the end-user products. That is, all the BI products like dashboards and reports, but also uh, the analytics environments that are used by uh, data scientists, for instance, um, or even exports that are handed over to external companies. Well, that are all products that uh, um, that's for the business it's all about they don't really care about all the things that we have to do uh, uh, in order to uh, create these products but they so these are the customer facing products uh, in general 
what we see that there are uh, a lot of techniques available uh, which we perhaps already know from uh, other domains that we can reuse to test these products test reports and, uh, uh, and etc uh, one thing that we try to do in the training and that we will do in the training is hand over uh, checklists and uh, provide techniques and uh, do some hands-on testing of reports and dashboards then you can see the semantic layer that is the translation of the data that is in for instance in data marts uh, uh, to the business what we next do is we uh, look at all the things that are needed to get this data to acquire data from external uh, systems well i say external systems these can be in our company but they can also be in the cloud they can be twitter feeds or facebook uh, uh, entries but also uh, traditional databases uh, somewhere uh, in or uh, in the on-premise or somewhere else um, what we saw is that there are a lot of things that can go wrong when acquiring this data some of them are technical like uh, using wrong code pages uh, for character translation um, but a lot of things are going wrong because the wrong translation is uh, is made um, from a business perspective people don't use the same words for uh, or use the same words for different things or use uh, different words for the th same thing so that is something that can go wrong what we see is that you have uh, products like the um, uh, excuse me uh, that you have products that help us out like specifications so we know after this course you'll know better to uh, focus on that part that is helping uh, with uh, uh, covering these specifications and translating them into uh, test cases. So once you know that you are doing the translation in a proper way from the authentic sources into a staging area of your data warehouse or uh, taking up the uh, uh, right uh, data into your data lake, you can create better test cases. Um, one of the major parts uh, in a traditional data warehouse environment is uh, the ETL process, which is the extraction, transformation, and loading of data. Um, things that you learn is, uh, one, one thing you will learn is about the timing, uh, what needs to be loaded first, what needs to be loaded last, et cetera, and what can go wrong if, uh, if, if you're um, doing it the wrong way. Uh, so you can create better test cases. Uh, one thing in a data warehouse is that they are adding history to data. That is uh, something that is uh, in the course. Uh, and um, one other thing is that data from the data warehouse is often extracted to data marts, which is something you will learn again too in the data uh, and analytics uh, training. um one more thing once you have uh, learned how um how to uh, make better test cases for each and every uh, aspect of your data analytics environment then um you will know how to how to do it but um as Rogier explained, it's important that you make right decisions on how much energy to put into uh, what part of your analytics data, data analytics landscape, excuse me. Um, so first of all, um, how do risks translate into uh, test design techniques? Um, how does it uh, measure uh, the quality of your entire system? And that is just the technical aspect. If we look at the data quality, that is something you will uh, learn how to hands-on test data quality. Well, um, well, here told a lot of things already, so I think that will be sufficient for now. But perhaps questions will arise, uh, uh, and I will be happy to answer those. Um, so. 
I'll hand over the uh, um, stick to Carl. Hello, everyone. I don't know if you, everyone can hear me. It's going well. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for joining today's webinar and taking the time out of your schedule, spending uh, your afternoon with us today if you're in India or your lunch almost here in Europe. Um, my name is Kyle Siemens and I'm the CEO and owner of Brightest uh, here in Berlin, Germany. So as mentioned before, I'm originally from Canada. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about Brightest and uh, what we do and uh, how we collaborate. So I got our, Armando is still in control of the slides. So just the next slide, please. <laughs> so a little bit about Brightest. Um, so we are a global exam provider. Oh, now that now that I'm the presenter, but I thought that was going to be Armando was going to present. So let's see how we can get this going. He surprised me. Um, so. Okay, just, uh... I think I can click on this, share. Is it working now? I could probably goes to uh, this slide. Yes. yes, it works. Perfect. All right. Then we're <laughs> the fun of technology. So I'm going to move it to the other screen. So I'm not looking in the in the other direction. Um, but uh, no. So that basically we are. Okay. Well, then I'm not going to be looking into the camera. So I apologize for that. Um, Everyone can see the slide now. I'll make it the full screen. Sorry about this. I wasn't planning to do this from the beginning. No, that's not true. Oh, the fun of live stuff. Uh, here we go. Go down to here and from the current slide. Great. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Sorry about that. So uh, basically, we are a uh, global examination provider here in Berlin, Germany. So we passed the test. We're able to start the presentation from our side as well. Um, we work closely with various local representatives and, for example, ISTQB boards around the world. Um, in this case, many of you might know the Indian Testing Board, who is a strong partner of us, and uh, I believe some of them are on the call today. Um, we are internationally recognized for uh, offering certifications in the area of ISTQB, IFPUG, which is the International Function Point Users Group, um, ISAQB, which we are now offering as well in the area of software architecture, and the Uniteds. I will get more into the Uniteds because there's a lot hidden behind that quick uh, little word, um, but for example, the Data and Analytics United. So you, if you want to check about our portfolio, because I'm not going to spend, wait, spend too much of your time, so you can enjoy your lunch or your afternoon, depending where you are, um, but I'll get to that very soon. So just a very quick announcement, since it was mentioned that the ISTQB foundation level, um, this one, I'm not going to go through the whole portfolio. There's a big one and it's ever growing, but for the foundation level at the bottom, um, this is one that we consider, at least the knowledge for this, is considered to be a prerequisite to the course. You don't have to have it, but we recommend you at least read the syllabus and, uh, and familiarize yourself with all the terms, because this is not a course that will teach you about software testing. <laughs> um, it will teach you about the testing in association with data and analytics, as mentioned by the, the creators. Um, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention that it, we're talking here about the foundation level uh, amount of knowledge would be a, a great benefit to have before taking the course. Um, the advantage of getting certified through Brightest, so we are recognized uh, by the IT industry throughout the world. So we've been around for three years now. In the first years, we focused a lot on our partners in Spain and Central South America. Now we're growing a lot uh, also with our partners in the, in the Indian Testing Board in India um, and throughout Europe with different ones. As we can see, uh, I might have noticed in the accent, so we have a few people on the, on the call today. Our experts are from the Netherlands, <laughs> so we have quite a few different people we're working with as well throughout Europe and also into North America, Asia, and starting also in Africa. So it's quite an exciting one. Um, everyone who takes an ISTQB exam with us, of course, has the chance to be on the successful candidate registry, which is important to know if you pass your exam and are successful. Um, and yes, we, everyone that takes an exam with us and is successful also receives, with, with no extra charge, a free badge from Acclaim Credly, which is the global leader in digital badging. Um, and I can provide you with more information if you have any questions about that. It's also on our website. So um, the un now we get to the United. So you can see a bunch of logos at the bottom of the screen. Um, basically, they are, over the last few years, we've realized we have a lot of people requesting for practical certifications. 
Um, there are many certifications out there in the areas of software testing, and uh, of course, as a big supporter of the ISTQB, it's wonderful. They focus a lot on the theory, which is great. It sets a standard for the entire world. Um, but now we also have not only theory, but we want people wanted to have it courses that would go for th two, three days and deal with a subject that they could actually have some hands-on experience. Um, so we realized that we would be coming up with something new and uh, in a, to a company, basically, mainly the ISTQB um, portfolio, which already exists. And the first ones we started off with actually already over two years ago now is the Selenium United, uh, which was launched and offered in a various amount of uh, different la languages offered by people around the world. Uh, and then we started with uh, all AI United, Agile United, Performance Testing United, DevOps United, and there are a few others that aren't on there yet. Of course, today we're focusing on the Data and Analytics United. We do also have one that fits into this category. It's a bit funny because the name is different for Design Sprint Alliance. This one is focusing on how to run a design sprint, and you learn that in two days. I know it sounds funny because a design sprint is usually four to five days, depending on who you're talking to, who might have very different opinions. Um, but this, in this case, we're running a design sprint on a topic that you might not be so invested in, both emotionally and financially. So uh, you are able to <laughs> take it a little bit more lighthearted and you're going to be able to go through the topics and focus on how to actually run a design sprint instead of focusing on how are we gonna get these results out. So you do go through a design sprint in this case in two days, but uh, it's an interesting way to figure things out and uh, learn how to do the proper ones in four to five. So, oh, I just skipped past the slide. So, and uh, we do collaborate with um, Pearson View, who is the, the market leader for electronic examinations. So all of our exams, which we currently offer, are available, of course, paper-based if ever needed, but uh, we also are aiming a lot from the electric side of things, especially now when we're looking at uh, how it's going with the, the current situation the world finds itself in. Um, but also to say papers, so we do have group exams, for example. We call these here in the middle, you can see a little tree growing on there uh, on the screen. So this is why I call the brightest green exams because uh, it's basically for groups and uh, you can register uh, with us to wherever you want in the world, since you'd like to do a group exam and we can administer directly in your offices. If you're in your offices, I know currently it's a different situation, um, but this is under normal circumstances or the main ones at the moment. Um, some people are still going to test centers, which is the bottom one, we call them brightest center exams, or uh, on the top of the three, there's a little camera and this is our brightest private exams. You can do the exams in your own home. So there's no price difference between the different modalities for us. We've kept it very straightforward. So if you have any questions about that and what it costs in your area, just let us know. Um, the information will follow in the next slide. But basically there are 5,200 test centers across the world. So there should be one relatively close to you. And if not, we have them anywhere in the world with the online proctored exams. So just a, it's already a little out of date because we have new partners all the time, um, but uh, how can you prepare for your exam? We have a lot of different training providers around the world. So you can see here on the side, there's a lot of logos. These are the training providers we work with around the world that offer. You can notice here, there's also Verity Software, <laughs> one of our partners here today that we're doing this webinar with. Um, and so they're, they're listed on our website and we call them TPPs or training provider partners. And so these ones can uh, support you with any training requirements you might need for the different uh, exam or trainings that they offer to prepare for our examinations. And you can see which ones offer which courses in which languages, in which parts of the world, sometimes online, sometimes live. And you can figure that all out on our website with a search tool. So, and basically that's pretty much it from my side. We are a a global uh, certification body consisting of four people <laughs> here in Berlin, Germany. And uh, we're happy to collaborate with you. If you have any questions, never hesitate to write out to us at info at brightest.org. Um, you can also write to me directly. My email is kyle at brightest.org, so K-Y-L-E. Um, and yeah, this is our, our team and we look forward to hearing from you. And now we want to see, does anyone have any questions? I have received some private message questions, but if you do have questions from what's been presented, please never hesitate to let us know. Something happened to my presentation. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know when. I think I press next. <laughs> so. Okay, and slideshow present current style. Yeah. There we go. We're back. So, uh, does anyone have any questions? I do have a couple that were sent uh, to me already. Yeah, Kai, I hi, Prasanna one. here. Uh, yeah, so I think there is one question from uh, Ms. Priyanka. Uh, she's asking, is there any exam for uh, data and analytics? <laughs> Yes, so that one I can I can take. So there there is an exam that is it's the way it's constructed is similar to ISTQB as you might know foundation level so the 40 questions um, you need 65% to pass and it's multiple choice. Uh, it's not yet available as we're still finalizing the syllabus, which as uh, was mentioned I believe by Rohir will be by the end of this month. Um, after that we will by the end of the August, we will be able to launch the exam. The everything else will be available, and the first trainings will actually officially start. Mm -hmm. All right, and then I do have a couple other questions, but I'm going to aim these more at the creators. So we have Yap, Rohia, Armando. Um, so we have one here from uh, the standpoint of a manager. So it says, I'm a test manager. Would you say that this training is meant only for hands-on testing colleagues or also for managers? I don't know who wants to take that one. I'll leave it open to the creators. Shall I try to answer this one, uh, Kyle? Uh, Armando here. Sure. Um, uh, what what uh, you and uh, Rogier already told is that um, it's not only hands-on uh, testing that we are uh, trying to learn, but we are also also trying um, to to communicate uh, what um, uh, to do uh, in what time and uh, how much energy to how much effort uh, you put into which part of the the domain. So I think it's very important for test managers and test coordinators to uh, to join because that will give better insight in how much energy uh, to put in what parts of the of the testing. Perfect. That is, that is sufficient. And we have a we just got information also that was posted by Verity Software the training dates so their next training or their their first training in India will be on the 12th and 13th of September um, and uh, the registration link and is now on there as well so if you want to register for that one it's there we did get another question um, from uh, Priyanka uh, and the question was uh, I am into e ETL testing. Um, can you suggest any other certifications that might be interesting for me? Or maybe potentially are there other certifications coming or planned? I could take up this one as well. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I know for sure that Rogier and Jaap could do too. Um, well, at this moment, there is not yet an advanced training available uh, because uh, advanced trainings are uh, being uh, created as we speak. Uh, for instance, ETL testing is one of the, the parts that we want to cover, as well as uh, reports testing, that will be the next one. Uh, and also what we see is that there is uh, much uh, interest in test automation. So uh, I think that this one uh, is, is definitely on our backlog of uh, creating for advanced level testing. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, currently but, uh, we only cover, currently we cover in the course a little part of the ETL, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, one of on the list is indeed the ETL testing advanced level, uh, same as the reports. Yeah. That's yeah, that's, that's good that you mentioned that, Rogier, because there is already uh, ETL testing in this course. But if you are an ETL specialist, you might want to know more about it, and uh, uh, then uh, an advanced level training would be uh, would be interesting. Yes. Thanks for uh, for making that clear uh, here. We do have another question from Monica, who's asking if there are more dates than the 12th and 13th of September. Um, would, I think maybe Rohir might have an answer for that, uh, for online training. 
Yeah, we scheduled uh, we scheduled now on uh, the I think the, the second and the third uh, September out of my head. We right. scheduled hybrid course. So then uh, Armando and I are going to give the course in uh, in the Netherlands, but you can um, uh, attend the course via an online connection. So we uh, give it online, so you can just follow the course online, and then uh, you get it that one. So it's a hybrid course, so people can really come to the course, or you can apply uh, for the online course. I think the link is already the link is already on the website of Brightest. So if you want to know uh, uh, what to apply for that course, just give uh, write it down, uh, uh, re uh, uh, apply for the course, and uh, say that you want to follow it online. Uh, the challenge only is that uh, we are in the Netherlands, so we have a little bit of time difference. Uh, so, but uh, we will find out how we're going to solve that one. So that's it. So I received another question in reference to tools as well. And uh, so do I need any specific tools like Power BI or Informatica? I don't know who would like to take this one. I can take up this one uh, because uh, I see. Uh, 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 no, we are not focusing on specific tools in this course. We use. Um, uh, we are going to use a tool in the course, but that's an open source uh, tool that we're going to show you. But we're not going to focus uh, specifically on specific tools. Of course, we have we know information about it. So if there is a question about uh, uh, the tool itself, then we can can give that. But we don't know every tool, so that's uh, that's the challenge we have. Great. We we have another one also from Santosh. Um, are you going to teach data and analytics courses also like ML machine learning? And I have something I could also say about this one as well. <laughs> take it up, Kyle, <laughs> because I I don't really don't take machine learning in the course itself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, um, we do have, there's another certification which is also offered by uh, Verity Software. Um, that's the Artificial Intelligence United, a certified tester in AI. Um, and I have actually heard from some partners and from the review committee members from Data and Analytics United. They see this course as an excellent start to people who want to get more involved into machine learning. And the reason for that is to make sure that they have high quality data before they even start with the with the artificial intelligence machine learning. So the, there could be something also there to discuss with the Verity Software about potentially having both courses, one following the other. Um, in a week, perhaps, and seeing what can be made of that. Just a, an idea out there. So um, I don't know if anyone wants to add anything to that. Otherwise, I can go to the next question I have. Well, well, I want uh, something to add because I I already mentioned that uh, when people have very interesting uh, uh, subjects uh, for uh, another training, please let us know because we will accomplish, of course, uh, other trainings. Uh, I also uh, have a meeting uh, soon with uh, somebody who has uh, developed a verification and validation training in the in the data analytics uh, environment. So yeah, probably that will also be another course, of course. Uh, so the curriculum Perfect. will be uh, uh, going, uh, yeah, to extend. Extended. And then we have a very open question also from Santosh. How is the job market for data analytics testing area? I'm assuming in India or in general. Um, I don't know if our creators want to talk about this, particularly in the Netherlands or Europe, or if someone would like to jump in about India, if they have an idea as well. well of, course we, of course, we know it's uh, from the Netherlands. Um, uh, uh, I, so we know how the job market is in, in the Netherlands um, and of, the Netherlands is a little bit, little bit similar as Germany, so we and Belgium, but how it is in India, we cannot, I cannot uh, say anything about that one. Uh, we see that, um, uh, that there's a lot of uh, special, there's a, there's, a, there's a select group of testers available for BI because it's a really specific area. So, um, uh, and you see because of the, the, the more, more and more data is becoming more important in the market itself. 
uh, and that companies are using their data to, to drive the strategy of their company and to make the business decisions, we see that the, that their, the market is increasing a lot. So I expect that it's a, it's a future-proof uh, company, a future-proof future uh, job that you can select. Uh, but I'm not sure how it is in India. I expect it will be uh, it will be uh, similar because uh, the capturing of data in India and China and all those uh, all the areas there, there is a huge amount of people, much more than in the Netherlands. So I can expect that I can expect that more data is collected than we do in the Netherlands at this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perhaps uh, perhaps Jaap can tell you something about the salary, uh, uh, but that's for the European market then. Yes, please tell us all your salaries. <laughs> no, <it's not>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it. I, I don't think we can say something about the salary because uh, it's quite different uh, of the, uh, each area. So it doesn't. Uh, yeah, you, you, I don't know. Well, I, I can only tell you something about the Dutch market uh, because I see that the salary for uh, testers in general is about uh, 70 to 90 euros uh, for each hour. For uh, and if uh, uh, if you're special, if you have any specialization, be it uh, data analytics or be it uh, some other kind of specialization, that makes uh, that your salary can go up uh, uh, considerably. So uh, I think that. It's very normal in the Netherlands to uh, to get about 80 to 100 euros, but that's uh, just in the Netherlands. So I cannot make then a comparison. Armando, then you're talking about a freelance, of course. And, yes. And not yes. salary when you are an employee of a company. No. no, no. no. But it's that's yeah, it's it it depends. I think per, per area, but in the Netherlands, uh, the salary is around. Uh, uh, 3k to 7k uh, a, a month uh, and and when you become more uh, a specialist maybe more and uh, yeah uh, also the secondary uh, of course uh, in your salary yeah um, but I yeah uh, I, I realized that I was talking about the the hourly uh, Pay, um, but it's important for software testing companies to know that uh, um, they can ask more for for, for their uh, employees if they are put into work uh, at, at the customer side. So that's uh, that's important as well. Yeah. Um, but of course, once again, I cannot uh, say anything about the Indian market or about or the Chinese market or South American market. I just don't know. Perfect. Then we got another question, and actually two questions, which I'm going to try and combine. Please tell me, Raksha, if I'm missing something. Um, but um, how does the training cover test automation? Um, I do learn how to automate my. Do I learn how to automate my tests for data warehouses um, and anything on ETL? I believe we touched this already, but uh, more on direction of test automation in association with data analytics and at data warehouses. Rogier, will you take up this one? Oh yeah, I can do. Yeah, uh, ETL uh, on automation. We don't uh, automate. We do don't do uh, teach you about automation in this course. Um, uh, we're gonna explain uh, about the ETL itself, of course. What's ETL uh, and how you can use some tools uh, in that process and what are useful tools. But we uh, we don't use a specific automation tool, or we're not going to automate. Um, um, during this course, what we're going to do is uh, what it's one of those extensions too that we have on our list for future uh, future advanced courses. Uh, but it, yeah, if we're going to put an um, automation tool in this course, and I know it's useful, uh, then we had to extend the course uh, uh, yeah, in a couple of days. And at this point, we think the the information is enough that we put uh, put in there. We do the show you uh, information about the different tool sets, uh, the tools that exist in a specific BI environment. Uh, same thing as the CTFL and the CTAL uh, courses do, the, the Agile Tester courses do, is they're going to show you the tool sets that are specific in a specific area of Agile Testing. Now we do the same here. We're going to show you the specific tools 
that are available in a uh, BI environment, but we don't uh, do anything with automation yet. Yes. So that's the answer on that one. And uh, we did have a question about uh, course fees and certification fee, um, but here we also have the post from Prasanna to also check the website for that because it will be very dependent on where it is, who's running it, and and so on. So that would be important. Just check the website for more information on that, or send if you want to know about the certification fees in your country. Please just send us an email to info at brightest.org, and we'll be able to let you know. Keeping in mind, it will first be available towards the end of August <laughs> to, have, to take this exam, um, but we do have other exams. They're already online. Um, I have one more question here for in the area of data migration. So I am about to enter a project which is not so much about data warehousing um, and analytics, but more data migration. What do you think uh, would this training be useful? I uh, would like to pick up this one. Um, just as Rogier and I explained uh, earlier, uh, if you if you took a take a look at the data analytics landscape. On the left-hand side, you see all kinds of sources uh, that need to be uh, uh, um, uh, extracted. Uh, and this is exactly the part where um, this course uh, overlaps with uh, data migrations, because in data migrations, you want to know that the data is taken over complete in a complete and correct uh, fashion. So it's very uh, useful there. I, I absolutely think that you uh, you can use this training to improve your data migration uh, project. Yes, great. I think we have, uh, those are all the questions we currently have. Are there any more questions from, from the audience? Otherwise, we have a few more quick notes from Verity Software. Uh, Kyle, uh, Prasanna here. So I think we uh, missed one question. Uh, it's from Aishwarya. She just asked the organizers, I guess, by mistake. So the question is, uh, is there anything specific to test data management in the certification on data analytics? Test data management. Okay. Um, well, we covered the, uh, the landscape uh, and we also covered the DTAP environment, the development test acceptance and product uh, production environment and we uh, also cover uh, a part of the, the test data generation but we do not actually generate data in our course uh, itself but we uh, discuss uh, where to generate data where to use the production data uh, also keeping in mind that there are regulations and laws uh, uh, applicable uh, so that's uh, that's covered in this way I hope that is uh, that's answering her question. Yep. Great. Uh, any other questions out there or clarifications that may have gone to particular people? <laughs> no? All right. Then I don't know if I have to pass on the presentation rights or if they get taken from uh, me by... <laughs> yes, uh, so uh, I think uh, with that, uh, we will end uh, today's webinar. I would like to thank all the gentlemen for uh, uh, coming in and uh, giving a wonderful session and explaining uh, to all the audience about the data and analytics uh, course which they have launched for the testers. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. So before we leave, I would just like to uh, show uh, the participants a slide uh, uh, with the details of the course on when we are planning to run the course uh, in uh, online so that uh, people interested can register and join in. Uh, so we have the up, the next, the first batch of this uh, Training on uh, data analytics, uh, certified data analytics tester uh, is in the month of September and it's on the 12th and 13th of September. It will be online. So I have already dropped the registration link and the website in the chat section. If you can just scroll up and find it there if you want more details. And or you can always get in touch with us. You can get in touch with either me or my colleagues, uh, Gokul or uh, Pinky. So uh, once again, uh, thank you everyone for uh, taking out time and attending this webinar. We certainly hope that it was really helpful for you all. 
and uh, a big thank you to Yap, Armando, Rokhier and Kyle for the wonderful presentation. Hope you all have a great uh, weekend. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you all. Definitely keep safe. Have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, thanks, Thank Roger. Thanks, Armando, Kyle, Yap. Thanks a lot for joining the uh, webinar. Yeah.